Nature has tried to protect the eyes from injury by providing us with a number of built-in devices. The eyelashes catch dust and light particles before they can blow into the eye. Eyebrows cushion light blows and catch falling particles before they reach the eye. Tear ducts lubricate the eyes and wash away foreign substances that can get on the eyeballs. Pupils contract to protect the eyes from bright sunlight. Blinking your eyes is a defense mechanism to protect your eyes also. These natural defenses protect the eyes from minor injuries, but they are not sufficient to protect our eyes from heavy exposures that exist in industry today. You know the hazards. You work with them every day. Chips and grinding particles, splashes of hot metal or other substances which can burn and scar the eyeball. Chemicals such as acids, tar, gasoline, diesel fuel, pesticides, and a wide range of other chemicals that can damage your eyes and face. You know what we're leading to, and here it comes. That fantastic and exciting array of personal protective equipment known as eye protection. You got it. We could wrap this program up in about 30 seconds by telling you to wear eye protection when required. But of course, you already know that. So let's take the short way around a big subject and talk a bit about eye protection and try to give you information so you can make the right decision when and where and how to wear eye protection. Certainly, we don't need to show you pictures of people having their eyes cut open in surgery to show you the danger of eye hazards. We don't need to show you some safety glasses with embedded nails, chips, or other testimony about how safety glasses saved a person's eyes. This program is just a little different. As informed professionals in an industry where every day poses a new problem or situation, let's take a few minutes to review some straight facts. Then you make up your mind about eye protection yourself. First, let's hit the people who wear glasses and don't wear eye protection. Now, when you get a new pair of glasses from the optometrist, he or she will tell you they are safety glasses, specially treated. Now, in most states, it's the law. What the optometrist is telling you is the glasses are specially treated to help prevent them from breaking if you drop them. They are not safety glasses in the industrial sense, unless you specifically ordered a pair of industrial safety glasses with your prescription. Normal street glasses are not eye protection. Industrial safety glasses are special glasses that can withstand a certain impact without shattering. There's a standard all opticians use when creating industrial safety glasses. Okay, your street glasses are not eye protection. In fact, you can add to the hazard in some cases. If you wear glasses, you should wear industrial safety glass prescription lenses. Check with your company or optometrist for specific information. Now, without getting complicated, let's review quickly some basic eye protection facts. Safety glasses are designed to protect you from light impacts. Could be a nail flying off a hammer, a broken piece of chisel, milling chips, or a variety of other light impact objects. Notice we didn't say complete eye protection. Even safety glasses can be damaged, but they do provide some degree of eye protection. One problem that exists with safety glasses is the part that remains exposed. Side shields do offer some protection, but what about the top and bottom of the glasses? Many injuries occur while employees are wearing safety glasses, but something got underneath the glasses and caused an injury. That's why the proper selection of safety eyewear is so important. Now to solve that problem, select the fully enclosed safety goggles. The main drawback here is they get hot, sweaty, and sometimes they even fog up. They do have vents in the goggles, but again, it's a decision and judgment a professional must make. Eye protection or comfort? Now, welders have special protection because of the harmful effects of ultraviolet, visible, and infrared light. Depending upon the flux used and the size and temperature of the melted metal, the welding process will emit all three harmful light spectrums. Basically, the control of infrared and visible radiations are most desired. Heavy gas welding and cutting operations exceeding 30 amps present special problems in the ultraviolet light spectrum. There are special shades of protection for specific applications. 
If you choose a shaded lens, it may seem okay to you, but if it's not the right shade for the job, you could be damaging your eyes without even knowing about it. That's where you and the company must make the decision to use the right lens for the specific job. There are other specialty eye protection devices available, such as laser eye protection and others, but the important consideration is to use the equipment and not take chances. That brings us to the next consideration, and that's the face shield. It's the one sitting over the grinder that has a lot of dust on it. We know the reason why you don't use it, but a full face shield does offer protection for your face and eyes. It is recommended you wear safety glasses under the face shield for proper protection. Grinders, chemicals, and a variety of other areas require full face shields. Remember, safety devices are designed and required because of past experience. Now, years ago, when someone lost an eye, it was suggested safety glasses be invented. Safety is nothing but experience and trying to prevent repeat injuries. Okay, how about some more information on what to do when and if you ever have an eye injury at home, work, or at play? First, a short disclaimer. Always seek the advice of your doctor and follow your company's policies and procedures relating to first aid or treatment of any work injury. These are basic guidelines only, but only a physician can provide specific treatment advice. Getting something in the eye is the most common eye problem. Do not try to remove a particle from your eye unless you are sure it is just a minor irritant like dust or dirt. If there is doubt, seek medical attention. Do not rub your eyes or use dirty fingers to remove foreign objects. Small particles can often be dislodged by pulling the upper eyelid out and down over the lower lid. If you can see a particle floating on your eye, try to remove it with the corner of a clean handkerchief or spread your eye open with your thumbs and forefinger and pour tap water into the eye. If something is embedded in your eye, try to remain still. Do not attempt to remove that object. Do not rub, press on, or wash the eye even to stop bleeding. Loosely cover the eye and go to the nearest emergency medical room immediately or call an ambulance. If you know what is embedded in the eye, such as a metal chip, be sure to tell the doctor, as this will help in the treatment procedures. Certainly, you may be exposed to chemical burns. Immediately flood the exposed eye with water. Be quick to flush the eye with water, as every second counts. If you have an acid exposure, flush the eyes with water for 15 minutes. If exposed to alkalis, 30 minutes is necessary. When in doubt, flush the eyes with water longer periods of time. Don't waste time looking for antidotes. Spread eyelids open with the thumb and forefinger or pull the lower lid down to help get more water into the exposed area. Chemical burns are serious, and if you don't get water within seconds, you may be permanently damaged. Always seek medical attention as soon as possible after flushing your eyes with water. Again, knowing what chemical caused the exposure will help with the treatment. Just think, all this trouble can be avoided by wearing the proper eye protection. All right, a few more tips and we're out of here. You should have an eye exam periodically. And if you're over 40 and under 12, it should be annually or at least every two years. Most exams include a test for glaucoma, which is a serious disease that has no symptoms. If not found in time, it can destroy your eyesight. An eye exam can discover many other problems, such as cataracts, nearsightedness, farsightedness, astigmatism, and others. And how about contact lenses? Well, of course, they're great and make you look a lot better than people who have to wear glasses. But there's only one problem. Don't wear them in an industrial environment, especially where eyes are exposed to chemicals, fumes, mists, or such everyday eye hazards as welding using impact tools, grinders, or other impact producing tools and equipment. Leave your contact lenses at home. While we could give you many reasons for protecting your eyesight, let's just say it's important. Wear eye protection when it's needed. You don't need someone to tell you to wear it on a certain job. 
Professionals know what's happening, so make the right decision and wear eye protection. Thank you.